Hello, I'm Danielle and welcome to the Amuna Project. We here at the Amuna Project are continuing in our series of videos with respect to education, information, inspiration, guidance and advice. And in a previous video, I made reference to the census in the Book of Numbers, uh, at the beginning of the Book of Numbers. And when we get to chapter 3, uh, verse 15, we notice a, a very interesting thing with respect to the census. It says, count the sons of Levi, the, the tribe of Levi, count the sons of Levi, every male from one month of age and up. One month. Seems a little young to be counted in the census, but Rashi explains that the little infants of the tribe of Levi were counted from the tender age of one month and up, because already at this young age, um, they were called by the title of honor and distinction that they would achieve as adults. Little uh, Mordechai Halevi, little uh, Moshe Halevi. You know, they were, they were Leviim from 30 days on. So the question is, why grant such a, uh, an esteemed title to a baby? Um, who knows what kind of uh, uh, person this uh, will turn out to be? Uh, how, do you, how do we know that they're going to grow up to be uh, uh, guardians of the Holy Watch? How could we be so certain of their outcome? We see, regrettably, today, many children who come from a very good home, a, a Torah-observant, uh, faith-filled home, stray away. Religious parents are no guarantee of religious um, children. Uh, and no matter how dedicated they are or devoted to everything uh, Jewish, these children go uh, off the path, off the derrick. So what traits do members of the tribe of Levi, 3,000 years ago, what do they manifest that make them uh, different, that ensures that their children will grow up in the proper Jewish manner? It was Harav Shimon Schwab who explained that there was something about the Levi'im, something about the, the, uh, the Levites of old. Uh, they knew the secret of successful Torah transmission, of, of, of hinuk, of, of education. They knew and understood that the primary ingredient that would guarantee that there would not be a break from father to son and each ensuing generation would continue the legacy um, they knew the secret. Now, we get a, a hint of this at the end of the book of Numbers. Uh, in chapter 33, uh, Moses, Moshe Rabbeinu, is addressing the people and it specifically addresses Shevet Levi, the, the tribe of uh, Levi, the Levites. And he set out their praise and he says, he who could say regarding his mother and father, he did not see them. And as to his children, he did not know them. For they, the Levites, the tribe of Levi, kept your word and your covenant they did guard. And Rashi explains that this is in reference to the Chet Egel, the sin of the golden calf. Uh, when the, the rest of the Jewish people faltered, rebelled against uh, the Creator, and Moses exclaims, Who is for Hashem should come to me? call to arms. And it was Shevet Levi, the, the tribe of Levi, were the ones who took uh, up the stand. They took the stand for Hashem. They were commanded to slay um, those who worshipped the golden calf, even though that they were relatives. If they were um, descended of family relatives, if, uh, the, uh, the, uh, a maternal uh, uh, grandmother, uh, son, the, the, a brother from the same mother who was not uh, a Levi, uh, a daughter's son who was not a Levi. Doesn't matter if they were related, if they were people, if they were, con uh, they were involved in the Chet Egel and the sin of the golden calf, they, if they were rebelled against uh, the Creator, they were put to the sword. And um, the love of family defers to the love of Hashem. And a child growing up in such a household has conveyed a very uh, profound message. I love you more than anyone else in the world except Hashem, except the Creator. When a child grows up, 
knowing that his father loves him dearly, yet if the situation should arise that he and he must choose between the child and God, there's no mistake, no mixed messages that he's going to choose the child. God comes first. Um, and despite his love for his son, he will choose Hashem. The son realizes that the creator, that God is paramount and uh, in his father's eyes and that God is above everything else. This, that's for Hashem, the hope is that this will inspire this uh, son to respect uh, and, uh, and serve, ultimately serve God in the correct and proper manner. Um, this is the key to successful uh, Jewish learning. Uh, suggest su successful Jewish parenting as well. Parents must transmit a clear message to their child. When a child sees his parents blatant hypocrisy, it, when they see the, 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 the parents acting one way in public and one way at home, one way in a synagogue and one way at home, kids are very good at uh, sniffing out hypocrisy and um, they soon learn uh, what the real situation is, and this kind of behavior does very little to uh, encourage their esteem in the Almighty. We're going to be doing uh, more uh, videos along these lines. Please come back. Please watch. Please learn. And until next time, on behalf of the Imona Project, I'm Daniel, and thank you too much.